Hello, it's Sis Volk. Today I want to show you how you can make easy and affordable pockets for your stamps and dies. As examples, I use my favorite product brands. These are from Carla Creaties for the Craft Emotions brand. With this pocket, I laminate the example of the stamp inside the pocket. Here I have laminated the pocket for the brand Alina Craft from AliExpress. I laminated the Alina Kratal logo in the pocket. And need to see what brand the stamps or dies are. The dies of the Effect brand that you mainly buy in the action stores fit in the same pockets. I use a magnetic tape also from the action store. It's kind of a dollar store or budget store we have in Western Europe. I use this magnetic tape to stick on the cardboard. It's thin and cuttable tape and sturdy enough to keep the dies in place in the pockets. In this video I will show you how to make the pockets in different sizes. I also give some tips and tricks along the way, so keep watching to not miss a thing! I'll start with the AVEC alphabet dies. With a ruler I roughly measure where the magnetic tape should go and I put lines at approximately the same distance. When you buy a new die set you always have to take a moment to separate the dies from the card and think about how you are going to store them so you don't lose them. This is the main reason that I prefer to stick magnetic tape into my inserts. Do you hate that too? They should actually deliver them with magnet and all. I found a genius magnetic tray that's perfect for holding your dies together while crafting. Look how strong the magnet is, everything sticks directly onto the back. It's basically a container that's intended for nails and other tools. I bought this magnetic tray in the tools department at the Action Store. I assume every hardware store sells this. I had two in a pack. I quickly put some strips of magnetic tape on it. Fortunately, you can still peel off tape and reapply if you stuck it crooked. If it's not possible to break the dies by hand, I use a pair of pliers. For die sets with many different parts, I write down which parts are all there. This way I know for sure that everything is back in its place when I'm done working. Sometimes I also write on it how many dies the card contains. I have other sizes of dies from a VEC and they fit perfectly in a box I have. That is why I also want to cut these alphabet dies to the same height. I stick the logo on the back. Now I will show you how to cut the lamination sheets to size. I made different pockets in different sizes. This was a blank pocket and this pocket has the same size. With this pocket for craft emotions I also laminated the insert. When I have a new stamp I always stick tape to the plastic first to keep both sides together. You can slide stamped images or masks that you want to reuse inside the pocket in a loose plastic bag. I like it that the sample stays nice and clean and it also looks a lot shinier when laminated. Here I show a nice stamp set from Carla Creaties, which I didn't laminate the sample into the pocket. Here I keep the masks on the back in plastic, that way I can easily slide them in. This is the same size pocket. This is exactly where the text stamps and die set from the Linacraft store fit in. In this one pocket I keep both stamp sets with matching dies. I also tape the protective acetate backing with tape. Check the 
check out my other videos if you want to see how I use them in an extraordinary way. I start with the sizes for the pockets of Craft Emotions that you can also use for many other long stamp sets, such as those from Alina Craft Store. You will need two double pieces of lamination sheets to make a pocket. The outside part is always one quarter of an inch or 0.8 cm approximately larger than the inner part. I also always make the inner part a quarter inch or 0.8 to 1 cm larger than the size of the stamp that should fit in the pocket to ensure that the stamps or dies have enough space to slide in easily. Here I point out that I take a quarter of an inch or 0.8 cm extra for the lamination sheet size. I use 100 micron lamination sheets size A4. I bought these at the Action Store. One lamination sheet consists of two parts that are glued together on one side. The outside of a sheet is smooth, the inside is matte. The inside contains the sticky adhesive side that melts when the foil go goes through the laminator. I start with the cutting of the outside. I wrote the sizes for you on a note. I cut 5 inch or 12.7 cm and now I cut 7.5 inch or 19 cm. Now the cutting of the inside, that's 4 and 3 quart inch or 12 centimeters approximately. And the other side is 7 and a quarter inch or 18 centimeters approximately. So here we have the outside and the inside parts. First we open the outside lamination sheet. When you did not cut the glued edge off, they open like a book. Now I fold the inside inside out. I try to make sure that one side sticks statically together. Try to work as cleanly as possible. Dust and moisture will get between the lamination sheet. Place the inside part on top of the open part, matte side to matte side. Now close the book. There will be glossy sheets on both sides if you did it right. You try to only have edges on the sides and on the bottom. The top should be as close together as possible, but make sure that the matte inside does not stick out of the outer sheets. The matte inside contains glue and if it ends up in the laminator, it will get stuck. Because this sheet has the glued edge, like a book cover, I passed this side through the laminator first. If you have done this correctly, the pocket is immediately open. No problem if this doesn't work out, you can always cut it open. And now the first laminated pocket is finished. Yeah, I am so happy with this! There are two ways to store your stamps in the pockets. You can make a separate blank pocket where you can put in whatever you want. But you can also laminate the sample that comes with the stamp. First open the outside parts and fold the insides inside out. Put the mat inside on top of the mat outside sheet. The same way you would do with a blank transparent pocket. I have borders at the sides and bottom, but not at the top. Now place the sample 
on top of the sandwich with the picture face up. Place the last sheet with the glossy side up on top. Check my Instagram page if you want to see the funny cards I made with this awesome stamp set. I'm really a fan of all of Carla Creatie's products from Craft Emotions. Because I didn't have a glued book edge with this pocket, I chose to feed the bottom of the pocket into the laminator first. This will hopefully prevent glue from entering the machine and causing the laminator to jam. I have to cut a tiny strip off because it won't open. You can see in the background my laminator is laminating a blank pocket now with the same sizes, bottom feed it first. You now have a beautiful clean storage pocket for your stamps. The already beautiful bright colors now even look more beautiful and shinier in this laminated folder. The stamps slide in easily because I kept some extra space in the inside measurements. Also for this pocket I have to cut a tiny strip off to open the top of the pocket. It is big enough to store two stamp sets with the matching dies. Ok, now I continue to make the pocket for the effect dies from the Action Store. The width for the outside sheet measures 6 inches, which is 15.5 cm. The inside sheet is a quarter of an inch or 1 cm smaller. 5 3 quarter of an inch or 14.5 cm. I hope it helps to see my ruler. And the length is 7.5 inches or 19 cm for the outside sheet and 7 inches or 18 cm for the inside sheet. There's enough clearance for the die to slide in and there's a small edge between the inside and the outside to allow it to stick together. I take a lamination sheet and I choose to keep the glued book edge intact. The 6 inch side is just short of the ruler of my guillotine. I wrote some lines on it with a fine liner. I count a few millimeters extra to be on the safe side. If you keep it like this and don't cut out the top edge, you have a perfect size for an A5 stem or large die. For this one from Avec, I do cut the edge up, but I don't do that for all of them. The stems and dies can go together in a large plastic container. I first cut up the round corner before I make it at 19 cm height or 7.5 inch. My leftover is just at a good width of 5 and 3 quarter of an inch or 14.5 cm. I first cut off the round corner again before I make it at 7 inch or 18 cm height. Don't throw away all the leftover lamination sheets. You can still use it for all kinds of fun purposes such as labels, bookmarks, small cards, or to laminate pictures. Now I will show you again how to prepare the pocket. Turn the inside inside out and try to line them up perfectly. The glossy sides are facing each other. Now unfold the outside again and place the inside in it with equal space on both sides and at the top right on top of each other. So there is more space left at the bottom. Finally, 
Finally, I show you the sizes for the lamination sheets for Alina Craft Square background stamps. You need a 6 and 3 quarters or 17 centimeters square piece for the outside and 6 and a quarter or 16 centimeters square sheet for the inside. On Instagram I posted some nice cards where I used these stamps. I really like these background stamps. My next video is about making cards with them. So subscribe to my channel and don't miss the new video. As I showed you before, I always stick tape to the plastic first to keep both sides together. I get the best results with my cheap laminator if I do not laminate more than three sheets in a row. If I leave it on longer, a whitish haze appears on the lamination pocket. I will only continue laminating when the device has cooled down a bit. In between, I occasionally send a double folded piece of white printer paper through the laminator. This helps the laminator stay clean. For a Linacraft store, I laminated the logo in the lamination pockets. Looks professional, eh? I quickly show you again how it is done. But I guess you will know how to do it by now. A5 sized gnome stamp set fits in it. I finished laminating and organizing my stamps and dies. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful to you. And don't forget to like this video by clicking the thumbs up. And then I hope you enjoy card making with me again. Bye bye!